Welcome to this quick introduction to VisPack SSS for Blender. Now, if you've ever spent any time tweaking translucent materials in Blender, you'll know that it can be an extremely time-consuming process, with a lot of guesswork involved with the exact subsurface scattering settings and trying to find the right blend between transparency and translucency. And so the idea behind this material library is just to save you time and to cut out a lot of the guesswork. And I've done a lot of research behind the scenes to get these materials right. And the library is extremely easy to use. So first of all, I'm going to show you how you install it. And the first step is to simply unzip the material library somewhere on your hard drive. And once you've done that, you simply need to select the path where the library has been unpacked and then copy it to the clipboard, come back to Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, and you'll see there's a section called File Pass at the bottom. Click on the little plus sign because you don't want to install this in the default location and then just paste the location of your library into the path and then click on Add Asset Library. Then you'll need to rename it. So I'm going to call this VisPack SSS. And then it's extremely important to save your preferences. And once you've done that, you can dismiss the preferences popover. And then you simply need to open the asset browser in one of your available panels. So I'm just going to come over to this panel on the left and I'm just going to select the asset browser. And you can see that it defaults to current file, but any of your installed libraries are also going to be available there. So if I just select VisPack SSS, the library will then appear in the panel. So I'm just going to resize things a bit so I have a few more rows of icons. And now I can start adding materials to my scene. So let's start with this ball. I think I'm going to want a nice rubber on that. So I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom of the list until I find the rubber material. And here it is. I'm just going to drag and drop it onto the ball. And then I'm going to select the ball so that I have that material open in the editor. And let's say I want to make some changes. For example, I might want to change the color. Well, with the item selected in the material tab, I can see that I have all the settings here. Now, because the subsurface for this material is set to one, I don't want to edit the base color. I want to edit the subsurface color. So let's just open the color picker here and just give it a nice bright blue color. Next, I'll move on to the cherry. Now, if I scroll back to the top of the material library, there actually is a cherry material I can use. So let me just drag and drop that onto the cherry and not the stem. And as you can see, that's added the material to the cherry, but the stem still has the default material. And that's because this object is split up into two separate materials. So I'll quickly select the material for the stem and I'm just going to duplicate it to create a unique material, which I will name stem. And here I'm just going to quickly create a basic material. So let's just give it a sort of dark green kind of shade. And with that done, I can now look at the gummy bear. And once again, I've got a gummy bear material in the library. So I'm just going to drag and drop that onto the gummy bear object. And finally, I want to add a material to the background plane. Now for this, it doesn't really make sense to use a translucent material. So I'm just going to switch to a different library, which is VisPack Architecture, which is another one of my material libraries. And let's scroll down and look for something like a nice granite. There's a granite blue pearl, and I'll just drag and drop that onto the background plane. And with that object selected in material mode, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and take a look at the tiling. Let's increase that to say five. And with that done, the scene is now ready for a test render in cycles. You can see that everything looks quite nice in Eevee. I'm just going to resize this viewport very slightly so that I can see the controls at the top. And I'm just going to quickly run a cycles preview. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'll now run a production render. And here is the completed render. I'm happy overall, but I think the cherry might be a little bit too bright and saturated, but that's really easy to fix. I'm just going to dismiss the render and let's select the cherry. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to add a hue and saturation node between this texture and the main shader. So let's go to add color hue saturation, and I'm just going to drop it right on that connection. So it automatically connects between the two. And then I'm simply just going to reduce the value a little bit. Let's try 0.5 and take a look at that. And that looks OK in my viewport preview. So let's try doing another render. And here is the completed render. And as you can see, applying and editing these complex materials is extremely quick and easy. 
And so if you find creating translucent materials to be fiddly, complex, and time-consuming, then this material library could certainly save you a lot of time.